Okay, so welcome back to the next part of my Master Grade Sinanju airbrush tutorial. Now, what I've got here is I've done both arms and I'm working on the uh, one of the legs now. Uh, sorry, not one of the legs, this is actually part of the, the main body. So uh, I've got them all up on their skewers and uh, ready for uh, prepped and ready for priming really. So I thought, uh, even though I've explained all this in the previous two parts, I thought um, you know it'd be a useful, nice little stopgap just to show you uh, some of the uh, some of the actual painting process in action, just so you can relate to it a little bit better. Okay, so here we go, and uh, that's all the parts. And if we swivel over to my work area, then I'll zoom out a little bit now. Um, I will go into all this um, in a bit more detail with the various airbrushes and you know the whole setup and all that sort of stuff in my uh, basic airbrush tutorial. So if you haven't had a look at that, then uh, I should have a, something up by now. So um, do have a look out for that. But uh, for the purposes of this series, then I'm just going to be talking about how I personally paint my uh, gunpla kits. So um, you know I'm not going to talk into or I'm not going to talk about all the various little uh, aspects of uh, airbrushing in general but you know that's why I have a separate series for that okay so let's get on with things so I'm uh, working at a bit of an odd angle here so uh, I don't normally work like this into the camera so do bear with me a little bit it's quite difficult getting all this in shot so um, I have various airbrushes but this is the one I'm going to use for um, for uh, actually priming the parts so First thing I'm going to do is just, uh, well I've already cleaned this so everything should be good but I'm just going to uh, load it up with a bit of water and um, just to get it going a bit really so um, just bear with me whilst I turn my compressor on. So uh, everything should be working straight off the bat so we'll just give this a little test. So um, no, I think I'll use my glove as a, as a little indication. Uh, so, you know, everything's working, that's really what you want to see, and you want to be able to, you want to be able to adjust this, so, you know, right now I'm just using air, and of course that dries out what you're doing, and uh, one of the beauties of having a uh, double action airbrush, which I'll talk about in more detail soon, but uh, just to give you an idea, you know, you can what you're looking for is a great deal of control so you can do some really thin lines like this or you can do some very wide angle sprays like this and just dry up so uh, that's pretty much everything working well you really wouldn't be spraying like this by the way that's just me cleaning out the airbrush before I use it so um, I always just use a bit of water just to uh, get everything going and make sure everything's working well So, uh, I'm happy with that, so uh, let's load it up with paint and uh, we'll carry on. Um, okay. So you've seen this in the previous um, series that I've been talking about. I like to use this Vallejo Surface Primer, uh, partly because it's a great big bottle and I don't have to think about it and partly because it's so easy to use because it is pre-thinned so easy as you like all you do is you uh, flip open the lid so he says and you'll find that it's uh, quite an easy just add a few drops in like that And what I like to do at this stage is to just take the protective cap off because um, I just hate forever trying to clean this thing so and I don't really need it if you're careful. So um, that really is all there is to it. Now usually I add something, uh, just bear me a second. Usually I'll add, um, I'll add a few drops of retarder which is uh, sort of prevents your paint from drying but in this case I'm not going to bother too much. But uh, if I just bring you over 
to my actual booth and I'm not actually going to bother turning it on because you might not be able to hear me very well but you know, I'm spraying acrylics here and uh, so it shouldn't be too much danger if I just do it in a very short um, you know, sort of exercise for you guys. So I'll try and spray onto the, uh, the red area so you can see. Uh, so you know, this is how the primer would go on. So that's a very thin coat, uh, sorry, a very fine control and then you can pull it all the way back, you know, until you get this kind of effect. So really, that's all you're after, and um, you know, to to kind of show you what I mean, I would then grab one of these pieces like this, and then just easy as you like. Now keep some distance when you're doing this, um, and don't start right in the middle because if you do, then you do risk some uh, sort of splash. Uh, so test it on a piece of paper. Once you're happy with the flow, start off from the side and then bring it across and all you're after is a very gentle dusting and I do realise you might not be able to see this so I'll zoom in a bit more so hopefully that will come into focus soon just bear with me a second I, think I might need to lock the focus in Okay, so that should be a bit better for you now. Right, so all you're really after is um, just to show you that's the plain side and that side of that's the side I've done so far. All you're after is uh, think of layers. Don't try and do this all in one go. So you just dust on a first initial layer like this and do that all round. And I'm barely pulling back on the trigger, by the way, just ever so slightly on the trigger. And that gives you your initial coat, which is basically like a key in coat. It just gives something for the rest of the paint to grip onto. So let's uh, let's put on the main coat. I'm just trying to do this so you can actually see it on the, in your shots. Now, let me just take this back off focus. Now, let me see if I can show you what we've done so far. So, I've purposely left the top side. Actually, you can't see very well, so bear me in a second. Okay, so um, I've got this in focus now. So, as you can see, that side I haven't done yet, so it's pretty much almost all red. And these sides, they're still not complete. I mean, it's not perfectly smooth, but don't worry about that. This. Um, you know, you're kind of doing things in layers, so don't try and do the whole thing in one go, otherwise you, that's how you, you uh, get a kind of uh, a sandy, kind of rough finish. You want to always build things up in layers. So you can see on the top there, that's like kind of like a bit light, so I need to do a little bit more on that one. But um, that's really all there is to it, so I'm just going to carry on for a little bit. So again, remember, spray off to the side before you begin and just test a little bit, so and that is really what you're after Okay, I just wanted to point out what that uh, in this video, I know uh, after priming, uh, you can see uh, some nub marks here and uh, here, for instance, and uh, and really, uh, when I was spraying it, I did notice some, but they're really not as apparent as they uh, as they are right now on the screen. Uh, that's just my super macro camera doing that. 
Um, but really, I wanted to take the opportunity to illustrate a point where, with priming, um, this is the other good good reason why you would prime, and it just shows up mistakes that you think were smooth but aren't completely perfectly flush uh, when it, in reality. So, uh, you know, just want to throw that in there for you guys to keep a lookout for. And um, just for your information, uh, I'm probably going to just leave those. I'm being a little bit lazy with this model, uh, this model kit. And uh, by the time I do a black pre-shade and multiple layers of uh, clear coat and base painting, clear coat, I'm, you know, it's not going to be all that apparent. So uh, I'm not going to bother in this case. So uh, I'll let you know how that turns out. Okay. Now, with all that being said, uh, this video is getting on for a little bit now, so I'm probably going to call that one this a stop, and I'll uh, see you in the next part. So, if you like this video, then please press like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, so I'll look out for you, uh, for you guys in the next few parts, so thanks for watching.